Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and bulldogs everywhere, and welcome back to another weekly episode of the Butler Sports Report, presented by the Butler Collegian. I'm Jake Bedell. And I'm Jack Jankowski. And we're going to be taking a look back at a very eventful homecoming week around the athletics programs for the Butler teams and giving some insight as to what's going to continue for the next seven days. Jack, we saw a lot of success throughout the different programs. What can you tell us? Well, it's homecoming week, and how could we start with anything but football? Uh, Butler football got the win, 24-21 versus Moorhead State on homecoming. And I was at that game. The only thing you could really think from that one, Pace Temple can really catch the football. Oh, he's It's incredible. Uh, he had five catches for 85 yards and a touchdown, and he climbed the ladder in ridiculous fashion a couple times, especially on that touchdown going over the defender, making a spectacular play. He was amazing. Brad Snyder added 105 yards on the ground with a score himself, but it was really the defense, late game defense, that really helped Butler get the win there as they made a couple key stops down the stretch to secure the victory for our Bulldogs. Yeah, football is going to be back on the road to take on Drake University. They're going to be playing in Des Moines, Iowa this upcoming weekend. The Dogs are glad to be off to this 3-1 start. I really like the play that they've been seeing over the course of the last couple of games, uh, especially in that matchup against Moorhead State. Uh, and the play of Mickey Kane, as you mentioned, the defense. Mickey Kane had three sacks in that game against the Eagles, so their ability to get into the backfield has been very, very impressive. On the offensive side of the ball, they're – doing everything they need to do to get in the red or get into the red zone and score. They've been 11 of 13 on their trips into inside the 20 yard line. So I really like the play that they've been seeing. I hope that they can walk out a win with this upcoming game against Drake. Yeah, so let's move on to men's soccer. They took on Marshall at Butler this week and came out with a fr thrilling 4-3 to three victory. Uh, 90 minutes wasn't enough to separate these two teams as it required overtime, but Brandon Gould, with his second goal of the game, fifth goal of the season, gave Butler that win. Then they played Seton Hall, or St. John's, excuse me, St. John's on the road on Friday. They fell in that game 2 to nothing. The team now sits at 2-6-1 and one on the year and 0-3 and in conference play. How do they rebound this week? Well, they're going to be playing, taking on Evansville this upcoming Tuesday and then Georgetown coming Thursday. They're now, as you mentioned, they now sit at 2-6-1. and one. So hopefully that last victory will give them you know, some encouragement moving forward. Uh, but perhaps, and perhaps an Evansville win uh, will help them gain some confidence. Uh, Evansville and Butler matchups tend to lean it towards Butler's favor, so hopefully they will be able to pull out a victory. Uh, as for the Dogs, though, they are averaging about two goals against them per game, so if they're going to find victory in the ne this next couple of games, uh, they're going to need to minimize opponent's shots on goal if they're going to see success. Absolutely. Now, on the women's side, the team battled Marquette and Seton Hall this week and won both games. Anja Savage getting her fifth goal of the season was all Butler needed for that first one, winning by a narrow margin of one to nothing. But then in the Seton Hall game, Bulldogs won a little bit more handedly, winning three to nothing in that one at uh, the Selick Bowl. Uh, they are now 5-0 at home and 8-3 and on the year overall, 2-0 in conference play. A lot of good numbers for the, for the Bulldogs. Absolutely. Uh, women's soccer is going to take on Providence later on this afternoon at home at the Selleck Bowl, and on Thursday they're going to travel to Cincinnati to take on rival Xavier. We talk week in and week out about how their defensive play has really stepped up and how they've been able to minimize opponent shots on goal or the goal scored against them, but it's something that needs to be said. I mean, when you're playing this efficiently on defense, it makes it very difficult for coaches to find different strategies in order to opportunize uh, different methods on offense for opponents, but the Bulldogs can't be stopped in defense. They've only allowed 11 goals in 11 games, and they're averaging about two goals games. I mean, you do the math; they're going to be winning those. They're going to be winning those matchups. So I really like their play so far this year. Right. They say best best offense is a good defense, and they're certainly showing that. Mm -hmm. Men's and women's cross country both ran in the Nutty Comb Wisconsin uh, Invitational this weekend uh, on Friday. The men's finished 25th, and the women's 26th. Men's tennis is going to travel up north to Purdue to take part in their fall invitational. That pl takes place Friday and Saturday, following their strong showing at the Western Michigan Invitational last week. And then going over to men's golf, they opened up the season, finishing tied for fifth at the Inverness Invitational, with senior Zach Carabine leading the team at four over par for the tournament. And both men's and women's programs are going to be at their own home invitational, the Butler Fall Invitational. The tournament runs Monday and Tuesday. Women's golf will also travel to Yale to take place in their event on Friday and Saturday. 
And then the swim team kicks off their season next week. What they got? Yes, they do. They kick off their season in the pool against the, uh, four other schools, including Xavier in the Butler Double Duel Tournament. Excellent. And then we finish it off with volleyball. Women's volleyball battle number 10 in the country. Creighton had them up 2-1, but it unfortunately slipped away for them. They lost in five sets, 3-2. They also played Providence this week. They won 3 to nothing in that one. Uh, and vol volleyball is now 5-11 and on the year. Yeah, but they're 2-2 two two in conference play, and I think those two losses were still encouraging for the program, especially after a very rough uh, out-of-conference matchups to start the season. But the two losses that they've had have both gone to five sets, so I think they're going to be able to you know, learn from their mistakes and be able to push forward towards uh, matchups. They travel to play DePaul on Wednesday and will host Georgetown and Villanova Friday and Saturday. So they do have a very busy week with three matchups coming this week. Uh, the recent successes will translate into those games. I do believe that they'll do very well. Absolutely. And that number 10 Creighton Blue Jay team, that's a tough team. Yeah, like, just are. taking them to five sets, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. Absolutely. Taking steps in the right direction, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all we have for you today. Uh, we'll be off next week for fall break, but join us in two weeks for another episode of the Butler Sports Report presented by the Butler Collegian. I'm Jack Jankowski. I'm Jake Bedell. We'll see you next time.